it's a little disturbing because they usually have them on marathons. Like it'll be all on like all day long. And it's a little disturbing to realize that this many cases like this have actually taken place. And there's more and more and more of them. But very interesting stuff. Kathy says she would be a novelist. Kathy, you can totally do that. You don't have to be hired for it. Just write your book. Dawn says a full-time animal rescue. Yes, I would love to work with animals. Diane says I would be the agent to get you on Ellen. (laughs) I love Diane. Diane's my number one fan. Love you, Diane. Uh, Beverly says Tom Hardy's personal assistant. All right, I had to look up Tom Hardy. I'm sorry I'm old now, like I said, uh, but apparently he's a very good-looking actor. And I'm not sure if she wants to be his personal assistant or a personal something else. Uh, Denise says that she would work in a kennel. So there's some of the things that you would like to do or be if you had no obstacles. And a lot of them are completely doable. You can work in a kennel. You can volunteer at the animal shelter. You can do a lot of these things that were mentioned. Uh, Diane can be a choreographer. It's not that hard to do. So if you can come up with something that easily, it's obviously something that lights you up. Maybe, and when I say maybe, what I mean is definitely look into how you can get there. Because that will lead to today's blog post, which is the best and worst of times. I put up my own quote today. It's the best of times with some of the worst moments. Which part will you focus on? So this has been a pretty tough year for me. I've probably had some of the worst situations of my life happen this year. Truly awful, totally unfair events that have rocked me to my core and made me question the kind of person I am. Did I deserve what happened to me? I always ask this question seriously to try and figure out how I contributed to the situation. I'm not completely blameless in the things that have happened to me, but I also don't think I would have handled things differently if I knew the outcome. So I have to take solace in the fact that I'm not perfect, but I also know that what has happened is unfair. I didn't deserve the harsh treatment I have had to endure. So what now? Sit around feeling sorry for myself for the injustices that have happened? You know what that does? That lets them win. The people who have already treated you unfairly will also get to control the rest of your life by stealing your happiness. Do not let that happen. Now, there are two specific instances I'm referring to that happened to me. One was personal, one was professional. And as I think about these shitty situations, I realize that in spite of these things happening, I am still the happiest I have ever been. And do you know why? Because I focus on the good in my life. And lucky for me, I have worked hard to fill my life with things I love. It doesn't mean I don't ever think about what has happened. It doesn't mean I don't get angry or sad that things played out the way they did. It also doesn't mean that I won't try to right some of the wrongs that I feel have happened. But I do not spend all my days and nights focusing on what's happened. I live my life in the best way possible because I want to be happy. Now, if you know my story, you know this wasn't always the case. It's not that I didn't want to be happy I truly believed I didn't know how. I was a pessimist, and I looked at the world with a chip on my shoulder. I felt I was owed better than what I got. That's why I know that these situations over the past year have been, would have been the end of me. I would have become the most bitter and angry person and stayed that way if I had not been able to change my life around by becoming what I like to refer to as a reformed pessimist. I concentrated on what I didn't have back then instead of what I did. And it did, like I said, take a long time to turn my thinking around. But I did. And you know how? 
I put in the work it takes to change my thinking. I read the books. I watched the shows like Oprah, Dr. Phil. I took responsibility for where I was in my life. I finally realized the only way to change my life was to change the way I lived it and the way I thought about it. It didn't happen instantaneously for me. It took a long time. I read so many self-help books. Some of them were really helpful in opening, opening my eyes about certain things in my life and why I was where I was. But they all called for some kind of action that I never actually put into action. I wanted to be happier, but I didn't want to have to you know, work for it. I didn't want to have to bother myself. And I hate to be the one to tell you that it just does not work that way. You can read all the books and it can make you feel better. But to be truly happy, you have to do the work for yourself. Once I finally decided to take the book's advice, and they all basically said the same thing in different ways, my life started changing for the better. I did start to focus on what I had instead of what I didn't. I knew what made me happy and I made sure to put myself in a position to enjoy it more. I realized that the world wasn't out to get me, that people had horrible things happen to them all the time, and there were people who had much worse things happen to them and still managed to live a great life. But if you are like I was, it will take work to change your perception. And it will feel like work at first, but you have to commit to it. And soon it won't feel like work as much as something you must do in order to be your happiest. So isn't that the greatest and most important work you could ever do? As I've been on this hopefulist journey for about six months now, well, I mean, you know, with the blog and the podcast, it's been six months now. The whole hopefulist journey has been, uh, well, 49 years. But I've made some really hard decisions about how I want the rest of my life to go. I have jumped in with both feet to commit to this business And I got to tell you, it's going slow, much slower than I hoped, but I am not giving up. I am all in. I'm going to be on stage singing the Missy Elliott rap of This Is Me someday, and I will continue doing what I'm doing until everyone knows who the hopefulest is. Now, the main reason that I'm doing this is because I truly feel this is my calling, I think that I really can help people along a path to optimism from pessimism. And I think I can help you do it much faster than it took me. I know how a pessimist thinks. I haven't forgotten. So I know how much you don't want to do the work. I know you want to come home after a long day and veg in front of the TV. And that's okay. But work on yourself too. It's the only way you will get the life you truly want. I want to help you and every single pessimist who longs for a better life. I also think I can help inspire non-pessimists, people who don't necessarily need to change their life around, but could use a good dose of inspiration and positivity on a daily basis. Give a little food for thought, and hopefully everyone can realize their true potential and know they are the only one in charge of their happiness. Now, my cousin often jokes how he can't understand how I'm a hopefulist living here in my shore house where I have a bunch of friends that I get to socialize with often and a wonderful husband who loves to take care of me. Well, here's the thing, though. These things didn't just happen. I worked to get myself to a place where I wanted to be, and then I worked to make friends once I got there. I designed my life exactly how I wanted it. A life I don't need a vacation from. And you can do it too. One of the things you can do is pursue that dream job you just told me that you would have if you could. And I always hate it when people said this, but if I can do it, anyone can. If I can change my way of thinking, if I can change my perception of the world, Anyone can. You just have to do the work it takes to look at the world a little differently, 
believe in yourself and believe in your dreams. Anything really is possible. And you are the only one who can make it happen. I totally just pumped myself up. Go me. I totally rock. Woohoo! Should we give all, all of ourselves a hand? We're going to rock it today, people. We are going to rock it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This is very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, so, I want you to take today and make it your biatch. I want you to rock it. I want you to do whatever it takes to get you to the level you're looking to get to. It is Taco Tuesday. Grab a taco. Think about what you can do right now to enjoy your life a little more. Then do it. I believe in you. And I want you to make today your best day yet. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit Hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Ellen, have me on your show.